What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. Left, right, left, right. Here we go. How y'all doing? It's good to be back in the booth. You guys know I do a fair bit of traveling. I've got a whole like playlist of improvised vocal booths that I've done in hotel rooms in different places I've been. I'm always on the lookout for a way that I can record and not have it take up a bunch of space in my bag. I tried to travel with a Samson Meteor, a USB microphone, but I tell you what, that thing got sent through security. It got stopped at security a million times. I'll show you. This thing, this thing, it's a good little microphone, but that shape <laughs> in your carry-on bag with the little lines, oh, they don't like it. They don't like this. This got stopped every single time, so I couldn't use the, the uh, Samson Media. I do like to travel with my Sennheiser microphone, my Sennheiser microphone. I do like to travel with this, although it is a little bit expensive. I had a friend make me, show me how um, he makes these little holders for the, uh, for the microphone. Is this the right thing? Yeah, so you just uh, fits perfectly in this PVC thing. Oh, that's so awesome. This plastic doesn't get caught through security, even though it's a really suspicious looking shape. But I'm always going through security, and I'm always looking for a way that I can try and um, just streamline and, and pack less stuff. Typically, my, my, uh, my travel setup has been a Zoom H5, an XLR cable, a microphone stand, and the microphone. So, and that's, it's actually reasonably small. Um, but I'm always looking for something smaller, something more streamlined, if I can just keep it like in my, in my carry-on bag and not have to add a bunch of weight. And so uh, several months ago, uh, George Whittem from uh, VoiceOver Body Shop had linked to this thing. This is the Ceramonic SR VR M1. And I don't think he had any experience with it, um, but it looked like exactly the thing I needed. It looks like, can I put this, how can I do this? Um, dark, bright, well, we don't care. It's a, uh, it's a portable recorder that provides phantom power. Let's take this over to the bench and uh, we're gonna unbox it real quick, okay? All right, so here's the box itself. It's just a, it's a very simple cardboard box. We'll slice it open and let's see what's inside. So inside what we have, it comes with a user manual, as everything does. We'll just set that over to the side because we don't ever look in that. And a little warranty card. Now, this is the device itself. You can see it's got an XLR jack on the top, just built right in. Nothing on this side, nothing on that side. That's just a plain open thing. And then at the bottom, ah, there's a little uh, connector, uh, a little slide out uh, battery clip. So this holds two AA batteries. And then behind this little rubberized flap right here, we've got a micro SD card slot and a, uh, a headphone jack. So you can just put in a pair of earbuds. There's the uh, SD card and there's where the earbuds go. Cool. So let me just go get a set of batteries and we'll just show you how to, how to put those in. All right, so you just pull that out with your fingernails and see if we can put these in here. Just put them in, clip one in like that. And how does this one go? No, 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 that's not right. Uh, oh, yeah, flip it around. That's how they normally go, right? In series, there we go. And just pop that back in and it clips right back in. Powers up. There we go. Powers up. Perfect. So let's go through some of the menu choices that are available on the Ceramonic SRVR M1. First, we'll turn it on. And we have four buttons, up, down, power, and record, but they each have multiple functions. The first thing I'll show you is the quick, the shortcut buttons to the three most common features, and that is the preamp level, the headphone level, and the low cut filter. So by long pressing on the up button, you switch back and forth uh, through, you cycle through each mode. Pull it down, it goes to the headphone volume and then quick presses allow you to go up and down on those values. Long press again, it goes up to the preamp value. Up and down. Long press again, takes you to the low cut filter. Low cut flat. 
The power button is also your main menu button. So a quick press on the power button takes you to the main menu. And there are seven choices and it's a roll around menu. So uh, there's file, input, record set, SD card, play mode, system set, and 48 volt set. And we'll go through each of these quickly. The first is the file menu, and that's sort of the file browser that allows you to see everything that's on the SD card and go through and listen to, through the headphone jack, everything, all the files that are available on this particular SD card. Next is the input, and that is just a, a long way to get to the low cut filter, whether you want it on or off. Next is record set, and that's where you get to set the different sizes and limits. Uh, and it's really just the file limit size. So how long do you want a default recording to be? 30, 60, 90, or 120 minutes. And I have mine set to 120 by default. Next is the sample rate, and you have a couple of common sample rates. Uh, it's 24 and 48 kilohertz, and either 16 or 24 bit bit depth. Next is the SD card that gives you statistics on the SD card, the size, how much is left, and whether or not you want to format it. Next is the playback mode, and that allows you to, to select how you want to playback the files that are on the card, single play, single cycle, order play, or order cycle. Don't really know what these are. I've been usually, usually using just single play to listen back to whatever file I have just recorded. Next is the system set. That's where you get to set the date and time and adjust the backlight display. So, and you can set the date and time on there by going through the different choices. And finally is the 48 volt set. And that's to turn on phantom power. One of the things I really like about this particular device, this, this particular device is it does supply 48 volts. And you can see once it switches on, the 48 volts indicator does come on. Now, the one thing to know about this is every time you power the device off and you power it back on, 48 volts is off by default, and that is to protect your microphone. So in case you uh, hook up a microphone that is unable to accept 48 volts, you won't accidentally fry it. So you do have to go to the menu, and luckily it's a, it's a wraparound menu, so you can get there in just a couple of presses to turn 48 volts back on. But you do have to remember to turn 48 volts back on if you're going to hook up a condenser mic. The condenser mics hook up very easily, so you can just match the two, uh, the XLR jack inputs, and it's a bit spring-loaded, so you just push it together until you hear it click, and now they are connected. Then when you're ready to record, you just hit the record button, and now you'll see that when we, when we touch the microphone, we can see the meter going. The record indicator will flash when it is in record mode, and you can see the time accruing. Press to stop recording, and then if you power off, if you long press and power off, it will save the file automatically. All right, so that's like super cool, right? So here is what you end up with. Uh, so we have the Neumann microphone in this case, the condenser microphone, plugged into the Saramonic. You can see that uh, it's recording and the 48 volts is activated. And so I've adjusted the preamp. I just have it sort of set in the middle at 36. Um, but this is how it sounds. Now, under normal circumstances, you would never use this microphone in a handheld configuration like this. I'm probably going to pop it. Uh, but I just want to show you that this is what you get. You get this nice little easy to easy to hold, easy to manage setup. Now, a, a couple of things that I, I will note about this. I do find the preamps are a touch loud, considering this is about I think it was about $125 when I bought it. Um, so these are not like, you know, super high quality preamps. They're good portable preamps. Um, and, you know, it will clip if you put it up too loud. You got to really mess with the settings. Um, but it has been, it has been really, it's been really, I've been impressed with this little thing. So, this is the uh, this is the normal configuration. I want to show you something else here.
switch back to the CAD equ uh, real quick so I can hold this up. You will probably want to use your still, you're going to put this in uh, a shock, you know, you're still going to keep your microphone in a shock mount on a microphone stand. And so what I have found, I'll disconnect the Neumann real quick, see if I can, see if I can do this without making too big a mess. So I'm just going to disconnect the Neumann. And some of the shock mounts on these microphones, it will, you can't get it to connect. It won't actually click together. So the spring load here doesn't retract quite enough to fit into that. And so the way I have solved that, actually it's been really easy. I got this little um, female to male extender for an XL. This is essentially just a super short XLR cable. Uh, and I'll link to this on Amazon. I, I, got it in a two pack it's just got a male on one side and a female on the other so you just plug this part into the into the ceremonic device and now you've got now this is the device and this will allow you to connect to the microphone so now you have this little configuration so if you do find that it won't mate together quite right because of your shock mount or something like that you can get these little extenders and now you'll also hear me talking into the nt1 so this is just an ex another example of uh, how this thing works so you could certainly use this in a booth you could use this uh, as your, like your first vocal booth if you remember one of my other videos where I show you uh, how I hook the zoom up and everything like that this is certainly um, you know a pretty reasonable uh, first booth uh, electronic type setup because this is nice and portable so if you need to get away from your computer you need to go work in a, a closet or something like that you could just bring this rig put it on a microphone stand of course so it just is like that and you'd have everything you'd have everything in place and you'd be able to just take the SD card out and then put it back in your uh, put it into your computer and then do your editing so uh, definitely a, a, another way that you could get away from the the hiss and noise of your computer this would also work I would say as a preamp and an external mic so if you uh, if you didn't have like a wireless mic pack you didn't want to uh, you weren't able to invest in in wireless mics or wireless mics could be a problem um, I'm gonna go back to this one right now um, you could use this uh, handheld on something like a Shure SM58 uh, or some or a, a reporter microphone so you could use those as a handheld so you could uh, get some of those really super durable uh, uh, handheld microphones I did a um, one with an electro voice uh, that's a good reporter style microphone so if you're gonna do man on the street type things um, you could use this. You could attach this. Um, this is small enough that if, if you had your microphone on a on a hot shoe. So, um, I, my camera, uh, my cameras here, they don't uh, they don't have a microphone in jack. So I could uh, I could record onto this and then mate the two uh, mate the audio app up later. That's how I always do it with these videos because this camera this camera can't hear me. everything after the fact I, and I just record separately and then make that up after certainly something you could do I get that little that's why you see me snapping my fingers or clapping my hands before a lot of videos because I'm doing that to synchronize and that's what you would uh, use this for but overall I think this has been sorry I feel a little silly holding this up uh, overall I think this has been a, a, a really nice little gadget I, I, I hope to get more use out of it uh, doing more field recording more outside recording more on location type recording uh, just to see what else is available i'm not a you know like a boom pole operator i, I don't have the, uh, the 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 mixing belt i don't have a need for a lot of that but when i do want to go outside and record this little um this little device i think will be able to come in really handy so now you've heard it with uh the nt1 you heard a little bit with uh with the neumann um in one of my other videos i think you heard it uh um where i was setting up a booth in a hotel room you heard it plugged into my uh, sennheiser um, so, I, you know, give it give it some thought. Uh, if you think you have a, a need for a portable type recorder, uh, something that's very basic, something that's just going to just record, doesn't need to do a lot. This is certainly a whole lot less expensive than uh, the Zoom H5. It's a, it's another option, another option to keep in your arsenal. So that's all I have for you today. This is the Ceramonic SRVR1. Bought it with my own money, not an advertisement or anything like that. I was using it for myself. So maybe. 
maybe it's <laughs> something that'll work for you. There it is, the SR VR M1. Maybe it'll work for you. Uh, anyway, that's all I have for you today. So now go grab your portable recorder, grab a microphone. Don't <laughs> don't do it like this. <laughs> don't do it like this. Uh, do a more uh, a, a better setup. But just get out there. Get out there and just record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.